see you guys in the dark. This is the first time that I have told anyone this story. It may not be dramatic or scary to some people, but I just wanted to share this experience anyways. I got a job at a hotel downtown from where I live. I have never worked in the hotel industry before, so I had no idea what to expect. The time between applying for the job and being hired was less than 24 hours, which made me pretty nervous. But I had been looking for several months and I couldn't find anything, so I thought that I would just take a chance. This hotel is about 150 years old, has plenty of character. Behind the front desk there are places where the wallpaper has torn away, revealing a psychedelic wallpaper from what I can only guess to be the 70s. We're talking bright pink, neon green, hookah-induced vision type of wallpaper. The walls in the upper floors are painted bright orange and yellow, and the hallways are narrow enough to give you a shining kind of feel, but I'll elaborate on that later. The manager is a young Chinese man in his mid-twenties, only five years older than me. The man who owns the building is also Chinese, and literally a walking stereotype. The owner is friendly and kind to all the employees, but he is also rich enough that he doesn't have to really care if the hotel isn't up to par. I also had that idea that he may have one of those run-down shopping centers downtown, so this might explain the less than 5-star quality of the hotel. Probably about a three and a half star in my opinion. Some people describe the place as quaint, unique, full of character, while others describe it as outdated. Or disappointing. As a history enthusiast, I would agree that the place is full of character, but I also think the owner should be a little more concerned about keeping the place clean. There are a lot of problems in this hotel, including mice, broken toilets, falling ceiling tiles, leaks, and other maintenance nightmares. The fancier rooms on the upper floors have real fireplaces in them, so that adds to the risk of fires at the hands of careless guests. Mice are a common problem here, and I'm thankful that the guests don't have to see all the dusty traps filled with dead rodents in the basement. But by far, the most interesting aspect of the hotel is that it's supposed to be haunted. There's two ghosts that have been reported in the building, as well as the adjoining pub next door, but then the hotel was first built. It was the reputation of being a complete dive. A lady now named Lady Churchill died in the hotel, and her spirit supposedly lingers in the haunted room 49, Guests will occasionally smell her perfume, or see her face in the mirror. One of the most frightening stories includes someone opening up the door, only to have Lady Churchill fly at them in fury. On my first day, when the boss toured me around the hotel, he pointed out the haunted room to me. Lady Churchill has also been spotted at the fireplace in the pub, arguing with her boyfriend, the other resident ghost, Brady. Brady was stabbed to death on a basement stairwell. That stairwell is not in use anymore as it leads from the street directly into the basement. Instead, it's used to store extra chairs and miscellaneous items. The light is never turned on, which adds more of a creep factor. My shift is during the day, from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Every morning when I come in, I have to check the entire hotel by myself, in search of homeless people sleeping in the back stairwell, or trying to get in through the basement. I'm not an intimidating person. I'm a short female, not physically fit, and too friendly for my own good. If I find someone hiding in the hotel, what was I supposed to do about it? I'm not sure which creeps me out more. The fact that I'm going around looking for people who shouldn't be there, or the idea that I have to walk around through dark and silent areas known to be haunted all by myself. My sweep of the hotel includes all four floors of the guest rooms, the kitchen, the back stairwell, the basement stairwell, and the basement itself. To give you some context, The back stairwell serves as a fire escape, connecting all the floors together. It goes straight down to the street level. It's also cold and echoey in there, and as I said before, full of dead mice. The four floors for guest rooms and all of their overlook hotel glory are shaped like a square horseshoe, which means more than enough blind corners where creepy twins might suddenly appear. Lady Churchill's haunted room is at the end of the hall, around one of those blind corners, And yes, I do think about this every time I search the hotel. There is an elevator and an interior stairwell. The one guests are supposed to use. Behind the elevator is this old connecting hallway that basically serves no purpose anymore. 
In the past, it may have been useful, but now it just serves as a secret passageway that goes behind the elevator and comes out the other end of the horseshoe. This hallway especially needs to be searched for homeless people, drunks, or people having sex. The basement by far is the creepiest part of the hotel. To get there, you can either take the elevator or go through the pub and down the stairs. I prefer to go through the pub because there are some fascinating black and white photos from when the hotel was first built, and I love to just look at them. It's also the best place to see the age of the brick foundation. Anyway, the basement is used for storing beer kegs, firewood, planter pots, housekeeping items, and maintenance tools, among other things. It's usually deserted. Now that I know the dark, unused basement stairwell is where Brady's spirit is supposed to be, I think I'll try to spend less time down there. This week is my second week of work, and my boss has put me on the afternoon and evening shift so I can get a sense of what it's like in case I have to cover anybody in the future. Yesterday was my first late night shift, and in that time I learned a whole bunch of things that I didn't want to know from the lady that I worked with. This woman, let's call her Peggy, has been at the hotel for 14 years. She's seen all there is to see, and is well known for her stories. I've listened to some of these stories, and honestly part of me thinks she's full of shit, but the other part is going to cautiously believe her on the off chance that it happens to be true. There are some things that I've learned about the hotel in the span of my shift. The man I'm replacing was not actually fired for chronic lateness, as my boss happened to have told me, but instead for sexual harassment. The head of housekeeping, a man that I get along with very well, is a friend of his. The day before, Peggy caught a drug addict rooting around in the private back office after hours. We looked over the security footage, and he was definitely searching for something. We now keep the office doors locked. There's two guests several years ago who stayed at the hotel, Then the next day they robbed a jewelry store downtown and fled back to the hotel with everything that they had stolen. There was a massive police standoff on the roof, SWAT teams and all. There's a news article about it online, otherwise I never would have believed it. The bedrock of the hotel can be found in the boiler room. There's a slight gap that can be filled in on the top right corner that connects directly to the street. One time, Peggy came down to the boiler room to find a man half through the gap, head first, trying to get in because he wanted to know what was down there. That image terrifies me. In the span of that one night shift, an alarm went off in the basement. The police showed up at the pub, and a guest verbally abused the day staff over a non-existent shuttle to the hospital. No, not an ambulance, but a shuttle. Taking the bus was beneath them, I suppose. And at my bus stop, after my shift, a man was shooting up in public. My city happens to have a drug epidemic going on right now. The bus took half an hour to arrive. When I got off my stop, it was as foggy as Silent Hill. I felt as though I should be looking around for Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees. It happens to be October after all. That's one night shift down. I have another tonight and one more the day after. It's amazing how different the hotel is after 3 p.m., much louder, that's for sure. Thanks to the pub on the other side, and the bar on the other. Everyone that I've gotten to know during my first week of work has already gone home, leaving me with some drunks, strangers, and Peggy's crazy stories. One thing's for sure, after three nights of this, I'll never complain about getting up early ever again. The day that I graduated 8th grade... On the same day that my dad came to pick me up, we leave to the city as my parents are divorced and live on the opposite side of the country. I'm a 15-year-old male, just for some reference. So we went on our way to get to the road and drove away. We got to the city, went to my father's office, and stayed there for a while. After about like two hours, we went home. He lives about 15 minutes from the actual city in a small village. There's probably about a thousand people, so everyone knows each other. When we get there, I settled into my old room. I have a few knives and a few airsoft guns, but the main weapon was my dad's old shotgun. I was pretty protected. I do get anxious sometimes during the night. I get paranoid really easily. I stayed up late, as I do normally. I was on my PC and playing some League, so I got pretty thirsty. I got up out of the chair. Went to go get some water. I had to go up the stairs because it's a three-story house with a big backyard and a pool. 
My dad said that I could use the bathroom on the third floor, because there was no one on that floor, so I had to go use the third floor one. I went on my way, I turned on the lights, and started walking up the stairs. The problem with the upper floor is that my cousin's mother died from cancer in the bedroom. Quite often I hear sounds from down and up the stairs. So I went up there. I saw that the door of the room was wide open. It's a pretty heavy door, so it can be heard from far away, but usually it's locked. The door was smashed. I got pretty paranoid. I sprinted down the stairs to go get my gun and a flashlight. I went to go get them. Suddenly, when I turned around, the door was shut. I didn't close it. I got really paranoid. Started to listen closely, so that if it was a burglar, I could hear them. Then the power went off. All the lights in my room went off. My PC had shut down. I got scared. I jumped. I remembered to keep calm so that I could turn on the flashlight. I loaded the gun and pointed it at the door. I waited for what I thought was like an hour. I looked at my watch. Only 20 seconds had passed away. I started to slowly go to the door. I opened it and heard a sound behind me. I pointed the gun behind me. The door is still wide open. I heard a strange laugh, like a cheap movie villain. I got really scared, and then the power came back on. The next day, I told everything to my dad. He said that I was lying. I didn't want to tell him anything anymore. The night after, I tried to forget what happened. I went upstairs again, checked the door with an airsoft pistol. I didn't want to carry a loaded gun around, so I just got that. It was locked, so I moved on. I went into the bathroom, got me some water. I drank it pretty fast. I pointed the gun at the door. I really don't know why, but I did it anyhow. I was sure that the power is on because I checked it this morning. I got back into my room, locked the door, and went to my PC. I sat down, had the pistol right next to me just in case I needed it, so I was ready. I started up and was ready to start playing ranked with some friends. Thought that it was just a coincidence. I tried to forget about it. I was in the middle of the game, and I heard a noise. I got the gun, just stared at the door. Then, as if nothing, I heard a noise like somebody was lighting a cigarette with a plastic lighter. I went to go check the door. It happened to have been closed. I said fuck that, and continued playing. I wanted to stream some. I decided to start the stream. I got quite a few views. There's maybe like 200 people. Then I was looking in the chat, and everybody started typing, What the fuck? That's a cool trick, dude. Behind you. Get a gun. So I looked around. There happened to have been nothing. I got up and turned on the lights. Then the chat went wild, telling me that there was something right behind me. Suddenly the internet stopped. I was freaked out. I got my gun. Then my guitar started playing by itself. I had it in its case so it was absolutely impossible. Then I saw what looked like a lady in a wedding dress playing with my guitar, staring at me. It was as if she was looking directly into my soul. I aimed my gun at the thing, then suddenly it disappeared. For the next few days, nothing has happened. But something happened to have scared me the other day. After I calmed down, I just tried to forget about it. I got up on Facebook and searched for some weed because I was out. So I messaged a few people in my area, found a guy that got a strong kilo. I got my money and a knife, went on my way about it. It was probably around 10 p.m. at the time. So I got the weed, headed back home. It wasn't shady at all, and I was pretty happy. So I got back home and rolled me a joint. I started up Twitch and burned one down. I started streaming. I really felt like it was pretty hard. So I just got some music, started playing after like two or three games. I suddenly heard something. My internet had stopped. I got up and got my gun loaded. Started walking to the door, then I heard footsteps. I locked the door, got out the key, and started looking at the keyhole. I happened to see a dark figure. Nothing like last time. I just saw two glowing eyes looking at me. I was scared shitless. Walked back while aiming at the door. I lit up a cigarette and just stayed there thinking that it's just the weed. So I called up a friend in the area and asked him to get a gun, come over to sleep over at my house. I told him that I happened to have some weed. So he happened to be game. 
He got his laptop and was on his way. I got up, put out my cigarette. I grabbed my gun and unlocked the door. I started walking slowly downstairs. I didn't see anything. I turned on all the lights. My dad happened to not be home at this time, so I was pretty much free to do anything that I wanted. I heard nothing, so I went on. I saw my friend entering the front door, and he shouted, Hey, my nigga! What's up, Sonny? I replied, Hey, what's up, Johnny? His name is not John, just for reference. We locked the door and got to my room. We decided to get high as hell, just watched funny shit on his laptop. The next morning, I saw something very weird. My internet cable happened to have been cut. I was shocked. My friend didn't get up, so I just made us some coffee, some breakfast. It was done. I left it upstairs. I decided to go walk upstairs to wake him up. He went to go try to find a change of underwear. He couldn't find any since he was going to be there for a few days. He happened to have brought spare clothing. We walked downstairs to go get some coffee. Suddenly it wasn't there. The coffee that I made was missing. I was surprised. I decided that I was just going to make more. Thought that I forgot it somewhere. Didn't want to creep my friend out, so I just went to go make some more. The breakfast suddenly was missing as well. I blamed it on my cats. We decided to go to a gas station to go get some snacks and drinks because we wanted to get some munchies. We quickly walked up there and went back as soon as we got what we needed. We got back home. We saw the door wide open. We were scared shitless. We happened to lock every single room in the house. I tried to stay calm. My friend got his 9mm Glock. It isn't very powerful, but it can stop pretty much anyone. We walk in. It's pretty late. We're pretty nervous, so we searched the whole house. We found my friend's underwear under a mattress, including my dad's lube. I guess as he's single. So, you know, no judging. A huge knife and a photo of me. We were scared shitless. We locked the basement. Got what we needed from the kitchen. Locked everything in the house. Then we got in the shower, one at a time. One washed in the shower and one guarded with a double barrel. So we felt secure. We called my dad. He didn't pick up. As he wasn't in the country at the moment. So we just had to rely on each other. He happened to want something to drink. So he goes on. We locked our door and started watching all the windows. We heard something outside. So we decided to make a pact that if something happened, we would finish the job. So we got all our knives and our guns, the flashlights, and we were heading out. Watch out, this is a little bit graphic. So we went outside and found the thing of nightmares. We found an old creepy as fuck rapist that I think he was with pale skin, a beer belly, a tank top, and khaki shorts. He happens to be drunk or something. I think I really don't know who he is. He's just staring at us. We shouted at him to get the fuck out of this private property. He ran to my old treehouse from when I was little that me and my dad had built. He started screaming at us that he will sleep there and that he is armed. We said that we are calling the cops if he doesn't get down and disarm himself, as he was outnumbered. He told us no, said that he would kill us. We knew that we can't surrender. I know that this sounds like bullshit, but trust me on this. It is all true, as my dad's property is really big. This has happened before, but we solved the problem without anyone getting harmed. We watched from the windows. He just stayed there and didn't get down. Suddenly at 3 a.m., he climbed down and went to the pool to drink some water which is with chlorine, so it is quite dangerous if you drink a lot. He got naked. He happened to be really dirty and disgusting. He jumped in, and as he did, we sat there, already armed. We started going to the pool. It happens to have lights in it, so we turned them on. We scared the living shit out of him. He shouted to not get so close, as he didn't have any weapons. We were sure to engage him. I happened to have some recruit military training, as my dad was a general just a few years ago, so he wanted me to know some of the techniques so I could defend myself, the way I can handle drunk people, or whatever comes my way. He started splashing water everywhere. We decided to point the gun at him, of course. They weren't loaded, but we were sure that he is just drunk, or maybe high on something pretty hard. 
So we just stood there. I was aiming at him while my friend called the cops. He jumps out of the pool, gets a shovel, and starts running at my friend. I quickly load the gun and shoot him right in the leg. He falls to the ground as the cops are coming. He starts singing a weird song. Maybe like a 50 or 60s love song. Something as the police came. They searched everywhere. Good thing they didn't find the weed or the guns. We told them that we just stabbed him with a crowbar. The police decided to search the basement and the treehouse. What they found is truly disturbing. In the treehouse, they found a small image viewer and a proper projector, and that explains the weird hallucinations that I saw at the start of the story. So he was just next to my door, watching me. He projected this image to scare me. Other things that we found. There were a few bent spoons, all burnt from the bottom. Those happen to be some of the utensils that we have been missing. A few big bags of pure black tar heroin. As the police told us, that's what it was. And other hard drugs. Some money stolen from my piggy bank, as it was there as well. Some other things, as black garbage bags, rope, knives, duct tape, even fucking chloroform. Pure chloroform. This happened around an hour ago now. If my friend wasn't there, I really don't know what could have happened to me. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos, and become a stalker of the night. And I'll see you next time.